والله معانا قله حقه من نشتري And what's the problem with his hands? What happened? ياكلها بس نالو لما يسي لما يسي الدم. Oh my gosh, it's red raw. Why? Why is he eating his fingers? ياكلها بنفسه كذا يمسكها وياكلها لما يسي الدم. Yemen, according to UNICEF, is the most difficult place in the world to be a child. Crumbling infrastructure from regular airstrikes, leading to poor sanitation, outbreaks of infectious disease, cholera, diphtheria. COVID has hit the country hard, and inflation is so bad that even those with money struggle to afford food. And those are the issues that Yemenis face if they're lucky enough to make it through the day. The United Nations estimates the total death toll so far will hit 377,000 by the end of the year. How did things get this bad? And how did Yemen, which is a beautiful country on the Red Sea, known for its coffee, its honey, become a proxy war for regional powers and international actors? It's complicated, and there are a lot of parties involved. The conflict in Yemen's roots can be traced back to the Arab Spring in 2011, when Yemenis protested against their longtime leader, Ali Abdullah Saleh. Demonstrations were mostly peaceful, but 50 people were killed. Saleh himself survived an assassination attempt. Then in comes the Gulf Cooperation Council, the GCC. That's kind of the regional organization that matters. A handful of Sunni majority monarchies, with the bloc's most powerful player, Saudi Arabia, usually taking the lead on regional geopolitical issues. The GCC struck a deal with Yemen's embattled leader to hand over the country to his vice president, Abrabu Mansour Hadi, in exchange for immunity. Groups like the Houthis, a Shia Muslim movement in the north of Yemen, saw this as a move to reinstall the same political elites in power, and they came out strongly against Hadi. And in a Game of Thrones-style twist, the Houthis joined forces with their former rival, the deposed president, Saleh, in hopes that their alliance would topple the new Saudi-backed government. The Houthis, with the help of Saleh loyalists, took the capital, Sana'a, and President Hadi was forced to flee to Saudi Arabia, who had been supporting him. In response, the Saudis formed a coalition that initially included the UAE, Egypt, Qatar, and Jordan, with support from the United States, the UK, and France in the form of logistics, intelligence, training, and weapons. Seeing the odds stack quickly against the Houthis, Saleh eventually disavowed the group in favor of negotiations back with the Saudis. Two days later, he was killed. Saudi Arabia says that its primary objective in Yemen is to contain Iran's influence in the region. And they say Iran openly supports the Houthis, though the Iranians implausibly deny giving the group any military support. One incident back in 2019 brings the Iranian claim into serious doubt. A twin attack at night with drones on two major Saudi oil facilities, one of them the largest in the world. The Houthis took responsibility for the attack, but investigations by the United Nations, by the US, and by the Saudis all concluded Iran was to blame. After seven years of fighting, Saudi Arabia and Iran continue to use Yemen as a theater of war, and civilians are caught in the crossfire. Since the war began, more than 24,000 Saudi-led coalition airstrikes have hit Yemen. One in 2018 hit a school bus and killed 26 young children, injured 19 more in a busy market. In response, aid groups have repeatedly called on the international community to ban weapons sales to Saudi Arabia. And they're saying that the United States, the United Kingdom, and France are at least partly to blame for the scale of human suffering that we are seeing today.